With just one command, I scanned my entire network, found my hacking targets, found out what operating systems are running, what ports are open, and even found vulnerabilities that I can exploit. That is the power of Nmap, a free essential tool for hackers and pretty much anyone in IT. Let's get started. You need to learn, learn, learn hacking. Nmap, or Network Mapper, is a tool used by hackers to scan networks so we can find live host or find targets to hack. And we can also use this tool to find out more information about these targets, a process called enumeration. So in this video, we're gonna break down Nmap. I'll show you how to use it. I'll show you how it works. Let's do it. Oh, and by the way, if you wanna go deeper than what I'm showing you here, check out IT Pro TV. They are the sponsor of my hacking journey. They're my primary learning source. And if you use my link below or code Network Chuck, you'll get 30% off everything forever. So check them out. Oh, and by the way, you can install Nmap anywhere. Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and you're gonna see me using Kali. Nmap is amazing. Let me show you why. Let's say I have a server on my network, and I do, 10.7.1.226. How would I typically find out if that host is there up and running? Well, I would just use ping, right? Ping 10.7.1.226. Okay, bam, I'm getting response, it's up. Now that's fine for pinging one device, but what if I wanna ping an entire network? It becomes kind of a problem. So my home network here is 10.7.1.0/24, which means that this network could have 254 hosts or endpoints that I could attack. Again, who wants to sit here and ping 254 hosts? Not this guy, so let's use nmap. I'll use the command nmap and then a switch. It'll be lowercase s capital P and then my network and go. And in 2.71 seconds, I found out that 15 hosts were up. Here's the list right here. That's amazing. Do it in your network right now. Okay, all right. We automated the pinging of hosts in a network. Big deal, Chuck. You're right. Nmap can do a lot more. A lot more. Like, check this out. You see, as a hacker, just knowing these hosts are up is not good enough for me. I need more info than that. If I look at the scanning methodology that the EC Council goes by, we just covered step one, checking if systems are alive. But now we want to look at step two. Check for open ports. Let's say my goal is to hack websites and I want to find all endpoints or servers in my network that are running a website. What am I gonna look for? Well, typically I'll look for port like 80 or port 443. These ports will typically be open on a server if they're running a website. That's how people access them, by accessing those ports. With Nmap, we can find that information super fast. Check this out. I'm gonna throw a sudo in here and then do Nmap dash or tick lowercase s capital T. I'll explain that here in a moment. And then say I'm looking for servers using port 80 and 443, I'll do a dash P and then 80 and 443. And then I'll specify my network 10.7.1.0 slash 24. Let's go. Oh, pseudo password. <laughs> now let's go. Coffee break. That was incredibly fast. Oh my gosh. 2.39 seconds. Yes. Okay. So what do we find? Well, here's the scan report for the host 10.7.1.211. We can see that port 80 and 443 are both closed. So probably not a web server. Safe to assume. But host 271226 bam both of these ports are open probably maybe a web server and we can quickly scroll through our, our results and see what other open ports we have like here's another one and it just has port 443 open now this is cool but even cooler is how it actually works check this out looking at my nmap command i use the switch dash st or tick st this is a type of port scan called a TCP connect, or you might see it as a full open scan. And the magic is in the TCP using the three-way handshake. I just said a lot of words. What is all that? If you don't know, I'm going to cover it real quick right now. Let's first start with what is TCP. It's a protocol, the transport control protocol. And what you got to know about it right now is that when, let's say, my computer wants to talk to a server or even another computer, it's the TCP protocol, a networking protocol that tells us how we communicate. How do we start the conversation? How do we keep it going? The rules for starting and establishing this conversation are often referred to as the three-way handshake. And it's what Nmap actually uses to do all its magic, to check if ports are open. And essentially, here's how it works. Let's say this is a web server and it's serving up davidbomble.com. If I want to visit davidbomble.com, I have to start a conversation with that server. So I'll start out by sending davidbomble.com a message saying, davidbomble.com, hey, I got something to tell you. I want to talk to you. Are you there? And uh, this is referred to as a SYN packet or a synchronization message. Now, because davidbomble.com is a web server, I want to talk to him on port 443. So that's where I'm sending this. I'm saying, hey, davidbomble.com on port 443, are you awake? If he is, if he's listening on that port, he should respond saying, yep, I am awake, I am here, I'm ready to talk. This is referred to as a SYN-ACK. 
And I'm like, yeah, yeah, let's talk, let's do this. So I respond back with a, ack, ach. <laughs> I'm here, I'm ready, let's talk. Three-way handshake. And this is what Nmap uses to see if the ports are open. Now we have a little bit of a problem. You see, commands like this, scans like this on a network might be a bit intrusive. You see security features like an IDS, which is an intrusion detection system uh, that's often built into firewalls, might catch on to this, might get you in trouble, might stop you in your tracks, but we can be a bit more stealthy. Here's what we can do. Well, instead of using the switch dash ST, we'll use a switch dash SS. So lowercase s, capital S, and then our ports and our network. S is for stealthy. That's actually the type of scan this is. It's a stealth scan or often referred to as a sin scan or a half open scan as opposed to the full open scan that we just did. The difference being that when nmap goes to initiate a three-way handshake, let's see our host here is 10.7.1.1, we'll send our send message, our send packet, let's say port 80. And then hopefully the host responds back with a send ACK. But because we're being stealthy, we're gonna say, um, never mind. And just walk away. We're not going to do the full, complete TCP connection. You see, to communicate with TCP, you have to complete that three-way handshake to establish a connection. If that three-way handshake is not completed, then there's no connection. So we're hoping that by not completing that connection or completing the three-way handshake process, we avoid firewalls going, hey, what are you doing down there? That's, that's the idea. Now, security and firewalls become more advanced, and sometimes they can even catch on if we do this, so keep that in mind. But this is a way to avoid that issue. Let's do it real quick. Bam, oh, pseudo, stealthy. We scanned the entire network and they didn't even see us coming or going or leaving. Now I wanna show you real quick the traffic that we're generating when we do this. I wanna actually show you what it looks like. We'll use Wireshark to capture it and then I'll show you. So let's do it real quick. I wanna I want show you the difference. I'm gonna change up my command just a little bit. I'm still gonna do ST, which if you remember is the full connection, but this time I'm not going to specify a port and I'm not gonna scan my entire network. I'll just scan one host, 10.7.1.226. If I don't specify a port, nothing bad happens. It just will automatically by default scan the top 1000 ports or most popular ports. And seeing that number makes you think, wow, it's gonna take forever. It actually doesn't. Let's do it real quick. I'll click go. And it's done. <laughs> like I told you, 0.17 seconds. Now I'll do it again with Wireshark running. All right, I'm capturing packets. Let's do that one more time. Done. I'm gonna filter by this IP address. And we'll look at one of these conversations here. And it's beautiful, just like what we talked about. Here's my end map. Here's my target, port 443. I've got my send message. I get a send ACK back from my target. And then I send an ACK back saying, everything's good, buddy. Let's talk on port 443, a full TCP connect. And then I'm like, you know, I didn't have much to say. I'm going to end this conversation. This flag right here, this RST is another flag that is just a reset or ending the conversation on a TCP conversation. Now let's check out the stealthy one. I'm gonna start my capture again and then go back to my commands here. This time we'll do dash S, big S and go. Same results, let's see what happened. <laughs> Crazy looking, huh? Let's check that same port and follow that path, that conversation. It's a little bit different, right? Started out the same way. I'm like, hey, you want to talk on 443? I got a send message. He replies back, yeah, yeah, let's talk. My port's wide open. And then I'm like, psych, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> I don't want to have that connection, that session established. I don't want to get caught. I'm just poking my head in the window, looking around, and I'm coming out. Now, you're probably tired of hearing me say this, but Nmap can do a lot more. Like, look at this. If you look at the manual page by typing in man and map, you can go through and look at all these switches you can use and all the crazy things you can do. Like for example, I can search for, let's do dash O. With this switch, I can enable OS detection and find out what OS is my targets are using, which is obviously really helpful. Let's try it out. Pseudo nmap dash capital O and my host, go. Done. So it did a few things here. First, it pinged the host saying, hey, it's up. So it used ping. Then it went ahead and checked if ports are open. So it's using TCP, three-way handshakes. And then it did its best to guess. And it's pretty accurate what OS this thing was using or is using. Now, this is a Linux machine. Let's try a Windows machine. It does work on Windows. Let's try it. I have a domain controller on my other network, 10.77.1.11. And this one's obviously pretty stinking fun. It found a lot of... Uh, ports that you might find open on a domain controller because it is doing a lot. And it learned that I'm using Windows Server 2012 R2, which is pretty crazy, right? But wait, there's more. Let's get back to our man page, man and map. I'm gonna search for dash A. This one's a combo search. It will do dash O 
which is OS detection, it'll check for versions of protocols. <laughs> I'll show you what that means here in a second. Uh, script scanning and trace route. All those words, we'll look at it right now. sudo and map dash a and my host and go. Now this one was busy. It was doing a lot, 128 seconds. But let's check out what we found. <laughs> found some pretty amazing stuff. We've got the SSH host key, the version of SSH we're using. It learned that we're using Apache on port 80, Red Hat Linux, doing some file sharing. Look at that. And then to top it all off, we have a trace route to see how far away it is from us and the network. That's amazing. Let's do my Windows machine real quick. Same command, different host, different network. Let's do it. Now these can take a while. If you're like, is it still working? Did it freeze? What's going on? You can hit enter anytime. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it a second to breathe. It'll tell you how fast it's going, the progress. 68% done, it was 25% earlier. How much time is left? Let's do it again, but I'll, I'll let it do its thing. Okay, this is taking forever, come on. <laughs> it's done, finally done. Oh my gosh, it took 303 seconds or seven. I can, I, can, I can read numbers, I promise. 307 seconds, what did it find out? That's a lot of stuff it found out, oh my gosh. So I found out all the versions of whatever I'm using for the protocols. Of course, it's all Microsoft based. Man, look at all this info it found. <laughs> That's awesome. My common name here on my SSL cert. Even the expiration. My SMB information, which is my file share. Oh my gosh. And then a nice little trace route. So cool. I love this. Okay, this video is going to be too long, but I want to show you just two more things. Okay, so stick around. Here we go. The first thing is that you can have a decoy. Because as you're scanning a network, you want to avoid being found. It's called obfuscation. <laughs> I can never say that word. Obfuscation, yeah. Just basically covering your tracks, making sure people can't find you easily. Because, hey, if you're scanning a network and you're sending all that traffic, something might pick you up. But let's get them off the trail. So let's do another port scan. I'll do a sudo nmap. We'll do an dash s t for a full TCP connection. And um, actually, no, let's go stealthy. We don't want them to find us. That's the point, right? <laughs> And we'll use the command dash D, which stands for decoy. And we'll put in a decoy IP address. Let's just say 10.7.1. This is nothing, 80. And then I'll put in my target to 10.7.1.226. And this is cool because what it will do is it will still send messages from me, putting in the packets that I am the sender, right? I'm the source. But it will also send another one, a duplicate, changing the source to 10.7.1. eighty. So if someone's looking through uh, traffic on the network and going, Man, there's a lot of traffic from that one host. Well, you can add decoys to where like, there's a lot of traffic from all these hosts. Which one's doing it? I don't know. <laughs> that's the big idea. That's that's super cool. Now, final thing I want to show you is awesome. <laughs> Nmap can do all these things I just showed you, but it also has a, uh, a scripting engine. You can write custom scripts for Nmap, Nmap that can do a lot of things. Let's go find these scripts. Here's the site. Uh, it's called the Nmap Scripting Engine, and here's all these scripts you can run. Uh, one that's cool are all these scripts under Vuln, which is vulnerabilities. It will actually scan your host. In addition to seeing if they're up and what ports are open, it'll scan to see if they have vulnerabilities that we could exploit. That's what I'm talking about. That's hacking automation right there. Now, we could go in here and run all these scripts individually, but you know what? I'm lazy. I'm not going to do that. Here's what I can do. I'm going to do this sudo in map the switch for scripts is dash dash scripts and then i can specify my script but what i'm going to do here instead is just type in voln which should use every one of those scripts in that category what okay now let's do my host <laughs> now this will take a bit so i'm going to do this and coffee break oh sorry it's script not scripts add scripts on the brain here we go and we wait and it's done 106 seconds, not too bad actually. Let's see what it did. Now, I have to be honest, there will be a lot of vulnerabilities on this particular box because the server is from VulnHub. But basically the script went through and analyzed this box for any vulnerabilities using the CVEs, which is common vulnerabilities and exposures. It's a list that's maintained and it found some, obviously, <laughs> which is awesome. And we could then go ahead and exploit those because those are known vulnerabilities. Easy enough, right? Oh, and by the way, VulnHub, it's awesome. That box I downloaded is actually called Keoptrix. Let me find it real quick. And they have five different versions. It's a VM you can download and it's designed to help you start hacking things. So it's a vulnerable box that you should be able to hack and there's walkthroughs and all kinds of challenges. But yeah, I picked this because it's gonna be vulnerable. And a huge shout out to the guy who created this who I was talking to the other day. He's the founder of the site. He's a hacking genius. Go follow him. I'll put a link below. 
Oh, and by the way, content on these will be coming. They're, they're pretty cool. Now, this was just a quick overview of Nmap and why it's amazing. If you want to become a hacker, if you want to get your CEH or any other hacking certification, you do need to become more familiar than what I just covered with Nmap. Here's some of the other switches you might want to learn. Put these on note cards, practice them, lab them understand what they are, understand how networking works with these situations. I forgot to cover this right here, actually, uh, the, the speeds. You can lower the speed in which it scans things so you can avoid being detected. The default is T3, which is a pretty normal speed scan, as it says normal speed scan right there. But you can go slower to avoid detection. I tried that, I lost patience, and I went faster. <laughs> but you can do that. And that was Nmap, just one tool we'll use for the scanning and enumeration part of hacking. And if you're going through the CEH, this is a vital step. If you check out the EC Council's official course, scanning and enumeration are module three and four, so pretty vital. And please don't consider this a deep dive on everything you need to know for scanning and enumeration. I showed you Nmap and some really fun things you can do with it. If you wanna dive deeper, which I encourage you to, in fact, I'm hoping this video makes you dive deeper, go check out IT Pro TV. I only have like one 16 minute video and they have a bunch of videos that you can go and dive deeper with. Not to mention they have virtual labs that you can just immediately start playing with stuff. You don't have to set up a lab, it's just there, you play with it, it's awesome. Again, link below or code network chuck for that. You get 30% off forever, so check it out. It's, it's worth it. I'm not a hacker yet, I know that, but I got just a little bit closer today by studying Nmap, scanning, and enumeration. I hope that if you watch this video, you got just a little bit closer to becoming a hacker as well. So if you like what I'm doing, if you want to keep watching my journey to see if I actually become a hacker, well, subscribe, hit that like button to help the YouTube algorithm and uh, hit that notification bell so you get notified when I launch stuff, videos and such. Well, uh, that's pretty much it. That's all I got. Let me know what you thought of the video below in the comments. Let me know if you've used Nmap or if you're going to use Nmap. I'd love to hear the cool ways you're going to use it. I'll catch you guys next time.